So in this video, I'll be showing how I made my own little holders for tools, and I'll actually be designing a completely new one and showing you how I do it and how I 3D print it and all that fun stuff. So let's get started. So as you can see here, both of these have holders for their tools, but they don't have it for the extra pieces that come with them. So I designed some. So this isn't going to be about these whatsoever. It's going to, going to be more about the design process of these and how you can make them yourself for basically whatever you want. You will need a little bit of skill in 3D design, but this is very simple. And a 3D printer, which I will show you the cheapest option you can get to get the best results. So if we look at this one right here, you can see that it is a just basically solid piece of plastic. I printed these in ABS, which is basically the same plastic that car interiors are made out of. It's the most common plastic for just plastic objects. Most things you have are probably made out of ABS. So as you can see, you can see that it was 3D printed and you can see all the texturing and everything from the 3D print. And you can print these a lot cleaner looking but these are holders and I think they look perfectly fine for what they do, which is holding tools. So recently I have designed both of these holders and they are both for sale. All you have to do basically is contact me or by the time I finish this video, I should have them posted up on my website. But if you are more on the designer side and want to make your own or make your own for other things, because you could literally make holders or organizers for anything. This is gonna be a great video for you to get into all this. So the good thing about this is all the software I'm gonna be showing in this is completely free. All you need is a 3D printer and I'll be showing that in a second. And it comes in at about $200. And then you can print as many things as you'd like and design as much as you want. So let me go grab that printer and let me show you some stuff about it. So this is a very basic 3D printer that you can get for about $200. This particular one is modified a bunch. So that's why it's all exposed wires here. And this will look a lot different than what you would get if you got one of these, but it's still the basic concept and you don't need any of these upgrades to print basic things like holders for tools. So it's really all you need is a basic Ender 3 like this. There's also other ones that you can get that come with more features like auto bed leveling because you have to manually level this bed to print properly. So auto bed leveling comes in handy. And you can also print more materials than just PLA, which is the most common printable material that everyone uses. You can also print ABS and PETG using this machine with no problem. And these pretty much come in a kit that everything is in pieces and you get to build the entire thing with instructions, of course. And it gives you a better feel for where everything is on this. So if you ever do have any problems, because it is a machine and machines do break. So the parts are basically off the shelf parts you can get replacements for, for very cheap, if anything it happens. So far, I haven't broke any of the stock parts on this, but in my move, I have damaged some of the aftermarket parts just because moving does that. So this particular machine is out of commission for right now but I have others that I can show you that do work really well and didn't break in my move. But like I said, it's not the machine's fault, it's some of the aftermarket stuff and it being jostled around and getting broken. So I need to get a new bed leveling switch for this so it can actually work properly. So basically this is my workhorse and very first 3D printer and it's still going after about four years or so of using it and using it a lot. And I don't even know if they sell these anymore, but it is and was a very good machine and still works to this day and has been making anything I could throw at it for the most part. It's very simple. It doesn't have any type of auto bed leveling or anything like that. You have to manually adjust it here. 
I have upgraded the base plate to a thicker piece of metal to make it more rigid and actually flat. And I've upgraded the extruder so it can print just about anything. And that's about it. Everything else is pretty much what you get from the factory. So I've had no real problems with this machine and nothing has gone out in it. And it has hundreds of hours, maybe even close to thousands of hours of print time on it. And it still runs like a champ. So that's enough about the actual 3D printers themselves. I'll have links to all of that in the description so you can check them out. And links to other YouTubers that can tell you way more than I ever could about the different printers and what ones to buy if you really are looking to get one and want more info on them. So I'm going to get into the actual designing aspect of this. I'm going to make a holder for these little radial discs. And all I really need is some calipers for measurements, the radial discs, and some paper so I can write it down. So I just want to make a round holder. So all I need to do is take one of these and figure out how big they are. So they're about 19 millimeters across. So let's bump that up to 20 so we have a little room. So I'm just going to write down 20 millimeters for those. Then I need to know how big this piece is, which is 2.2 millimeters. You can add more names to these, whatever is helpful for you, but I'll have all this near me so I can double check. I also have one that is bigger. So this one is three millimeters. And I'm going to mark down how many of these holes I need. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one. So that's pretty much all I need to start designing something for these. I know it's very minimal and I'm going through this very fast, but I'm just trying to get the concept across that you can just build things like this. So let's go over to the computer. All right, so now I'm over in my computer and inside of Fusion 360. So this is a very simple design and you can use some of the more simple tools in this program, but this program can also do some very complex and very difficult things. So I'm not even gonna get into that, but I will start here. So I'm going to make a drawing, basically a flat 2D drawing. And I just have to click what plane I want it on. Because if you look around, it's three dimensional and I'm just looking top down. So with our measurements, I want to take a circle and kind of just place it in here and make it 20 millimeters. This is just for marking purposes, so I know if they're going to fit or if they're going to be all squished together or not. So now I need to figure out how far from the center I need this. And seeing that they're 20 millimeters, I could probably move this out about 30 millimeters, which would give me a full circle of 60. So if I just click on this and push the D key, and here, it'll give me a dimension. So if I type in 30 here, it'll move it 30 millimeters from the center point of it from the center point here. Now, if I go up to create and then a circular pattern and click on this and then pick a center point for it to make a circle around, it will start making a circle of these. And it starts to fall by three, but we need a total of six. So there we go. And see how I could go a little bit closer in. So what I'm gonna do is push Control Z to get rid of that last action. So what I'm gonna do is take it to 20 and give that a try. So there we go. There just about to overlay right here. But remember, these are a little bit bigger than our actual pieces, so this should work perfectly. So now with that being said, what do we do? Well, we need to put circles inside of these for their actual posts. Because remember, these are just markers. So I'm just going to get the circle tool and use this. 
And if you remember, we needed them to be 2.2 millimeters to fit our posts into them. But we can't do that because if you make it exactly the same size, it won't fit because when you 3D print things, it usually shrinks a little bit. So what I tend to do is make things go up by half a millimeter to one whole millimeter, depending on what I'm doing. So instead of that being 0.2, I'm going to do point, let's say just 0.8. So that should work. And then I'm going to do the circle pattern again. But with my small hole and the center. So if you accidentally click on both of these first without switching, it'll select both of those as the um, circle pattern. So you can just exit that and then go back to selecting just the one and then selecting the center. Now those two will be centered and I need a total of six of these. So I actually don't need six of these because one of my mandrels are larger. So one thing you can do is just click on here and it'll stop it from making it there, but it'll still make the same pattern as if there was six. And then push okay. And there we go. So for that last one, I can just add a new circle here. And that one is supposed to be three millimeters exactly. And I'm just going to bump it up to 3.5. And there we go. So now we have all the holes lined up perfectly for basically what we want. But this is a weird looking pattern and I could technically keep it like this and go from here basically. Or I can make a circle that would connect everything together like that and it would make a circle base. So I think I'm going to do that and we're not quite done in the drawing process. So this is basically just a flat object right now, and you could use this and just make sure that these are holes that have basically caps on the bottom of them, but it would take up a lot of 3D printing filament to make this. What you might have noticed on my other things is I make little basically cups for everything and then make a small um, or thin plate to it. So it takes up less material and less time printing. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So in my quick select screen, I have a thing for offset, or you can just push O. So if I click here, so I'm gonna make this 1.6 millimeters thick, and it will just make a offset for that. I'm going to do the same thing for all of these. So if I just push O, and do 1.06. There we go. And this offset works even on the one that is larger because it is an offset from the circle itself. So it'll make it bigger. There's probably a better way of doing this or a quicker way of doing it, just like I did the patterns. But I do not know how to do that. So here we go. And then the last one. So now we have this mess of circles and we want to actually turn this into something now. Well, to do that, I'm going to finish the sketch and we just have this. It is just a flat object. I'm going to go into this setting here or you can push E and it's something called extruding. So I'm going to select everything and extrude down two millimeters. Now we just have what looks like a circle, like I didn't do anything. But if I go back into sketches and re-enable them basically, because every time you do that it disables what the sketches look like, you'll get this. And now you can work off of these and I'm going to extrude this two millimeters up and it'll make a little ridge on here and it will actually strengthen the plate. You'll notice these little bits here is because the circle is cutting into these other circles and you probably needed to click on that little bit there. So I'm going to undo that, click here, extrude, and then click inside here to get all of those back. And I'm going to go to the top view to make it easier for me to see. All right, that should be all of them. 
So now I can go up the two millimeters. Like so. And everything will be nice and clean all the way around. So the next thing we need are these pieces here. So what I'm going to do is select all of them. Actually, I could just go into extrude and then just normally click on these instead of holding shift down to select multiples. Now I can make this go up, let's say 10 millimeters. And as you can see, it makes the little posts actually work. So if I go ahead and accept that, there we go. And you could technically print this out as it is and it would work, but I like to add something called a fillet to the underside of all of these basically 90 degree angles to make it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to do a three millimeter fillet and it'll make it do something like that. It basically just gives it more area. And I could do the same thing in here. And just a two millimeter fillet or a one millimeter. And then for the top, so it's not a sharp edge right here and it makes it easier on the printer to actually print. I can do the same thing and do a 0 0.4, let's do 0 0.6. So there we go. I basically just designed a new holder that will hold all of those pieces that I needed. So now I just need to print this and get that all set up. So what I'm gonna do is save this and then up here in tools, you can go to make and it's for 3D printing. If you click on this and if you already have a program called Kira installed, which is a normal slicer program for most 3D printers and it's free, uh, it'll open directly into that. So that's what I'm going to do. So there it is, and we are in Cura right now. And I need to go up here and switch this over to my WinHAL duplicator, because you can have multiple machines in here. And I have all my settings. There's a bunch of preset settings in here that you can just use. And you can learn more about that from some of the other YouTubers I'm gonna link to at the end of this. And they'll walk you through basically everything about 3D printing and printers that I won't even be able to scratch the surface on in this video. But for the most part, I'm printing in these in ABS and all my settings are good. If you go to preview and go down the slice, you need to actually cut this up into what it's going to be. And you can see how it's going to lay down its layers. Let me exit this out so you can see better. So once you're in here, you can actually scroll down inside of this and see how it's going to build and come up. And if you come down here, it actually will tell you how long it's going to take to print one of these. And then down here, I need to actually change the name here to radial disc holder. So once that's done, I can go ahead and save this to a SD card and put it into my printer. All right, so here we go, about 30 minutes later. This is cooled down for the most part. And you can see it's pretty much the exact thing I designed. So we can see if these will actually fit in here now, which they kind of do, but they're not 100%. And this is a point that I actually wanted to show. Even making them bigger than they should be, and it should just fit, there's still going to be some tweaking that you have to do depending on your materials. Like for ABS, for example, like this, usually I do what I just showed you on the program, and then I will scale this up by about one or 2%, and it will make it so everything fits perfectly. And that's how this particular machine likes to print. Others, basically you have to learn your machine and play with it a bit. But the good thing is you can do that and you can make things 
pretty quick. So as you can see, I can still use this. And if I really wanted to and didn't want to take the time to print another one right now, I can just cut these out using a diamond bit or a drill bit to just open them up just a tiny bit and everything will fit perfectly. But that's the beauty of being able to 3D print things. You can quickly prototype, tweak things, reprint, and then have exactly the perfect thing. And then you can mass print them if you need to, or just make the one that you needed. All right, so as you can see, after cleaning it up and everything like that, it works fine. You can pull these out, they fit in there easily now. Even the thicker one, and there you go. So you can just, like I said, print one of these, even if it's off a little bit, fix it and have a usable thing and learn from your mistakes. But it's a long process to just learn how to use the software and the machine. But I wanted to show this option that 3D printers are pretty much not just for making little toys that you see everyone printing or a lot of people printing. You can actually make useful things. And these are just the simplest things I can make. And with some learning, you can do the same or even better. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. So I thought Skillshare would be a fitting sponsor for my channel. Seeing that you come here to learn stuff and Skillshare is a community for learning. And just like with my videos, you can learn at your own pace. And one of the things I really like about it is every class is project oriented. So you're working towards a goal and not just learning random skills. So you'll actually have something by the end of it. So if you are wanting to start out learning some stuff about Fusion 360, I suggest Kevin Kennedy. He has a three part class that takes you from installing the program to getting just about all of the basics down. Also be sure to check out Vladimir Mariano. He has a bunch of classes on 3D printing and how to think in the terms of actually printing out objects, along with teaching you how to use Fusion 360 as well. So Skillshare is going to be giving away two free months of Skillshare Premium to the first 1,000 people to use my link below. This gives you full access to the entire catalog that Skillshare has to offer. And after that, Skillshare is as low as $10 a month with an annual subscription. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So that's pretty much it. If you want any of these, I'm going to have a link in the description to my website so you can order one or you can start making them yourself if you want to go through and learn how to do this and buy a printer, which I'll have links to printers in the description also. I have basically a link to everything in the description or the first pinned comment. Well, other than that, like the video if you liked it, leave a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe. I found out that like 95% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, which is a crazy number to me. But yeah, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.